Uh, good evening and welcome to the MIT Enterprise Forum's Northwest Startup Demo, Spring 2010. My name is Steve Johnson. I'm chair of the Startup Demo branch of the Northwest chapter of the MIT Enterprise Forum. There are 24 worldwide chapters of the MIT Enterprise Forum, and the Northwest chapter, uh, based here in Seattle, consists of a number of branches, including the Venture Lab, uh, the Dinner Forums, Global Broadcasts, and the Northwest Startup Demo. The Northwest Startup Demo's goal is really just to help raise the profile of some of the uh, more intriguing companies that we have in our area. Um, so, sponsors. Sponsors for the Northwest Startup Demo. This time we have uh, Oric, uh, global law firm, can uh, help you with everything you need from uh, the beginning to the end. And, uh, um, and we'll mention Microsoft a little later, then, but uh, um, but anyway, they uh, and we also have uh, Adobe is also a sponsor. So Oric and uh, and Adobe are our sponsors, and thank you very much for them. Oric will be is donating some software to the to the winner. So by the way, uh, so let's see. Um, Tonight's event is once again held in partnership with uh, a number of the area's angel organizations. Those organizations are, in alphabetical order, the Alliance of Angels, the Koretsu Forum, the Puget Sound Venture Club, Seraph Capital Forum, the Tacoma Angel Network, and the Zeno Society. So uh, I'd like to introduce our judges this evening. We're very fortunate to uh, have a great panel of judges. Uh, from the Seattle Times, we have Briar Dudley. Uh, from Voyager Capital, we have Enrique Gordo. Uh, from Microsoft BizSpark, who uh, uh, they have, have previously been a sponsor and will be again in the future. Um, we have uh, uh, Christopher Griffin. And uh, uh, from Oric, we have Anik Guha. And uh, from the Alliance of Angels, we have Mike Krill. Uh, from the Koretsu Forum, we have Todd Dean. Um, and from Puget Sound Venture Club, we have Gary Rittner. From Serif Capital Forum, we have Valette Nolan. Uh, from Tacoma Angel Network, uh, we have, I believe, Gary North, who's on his way. And uh, uh, in Xeno Society, Robert Brown. So now I'd like to introduce Ed Hansen to uh, introduce the presenters. Thank you. All right, thanks, Steve, and, and welcome, everyone, to uh, our, our seventh demo. So this is a, a very exciting day. We are entering our, our fourth year of, of doing demo, which had started off as kind of a, a throwaway concept a few years ago, but it's really taken on, taken hold. Uh, so I'm pretty excited that everyone's still here, and there's still companies presenting who want to showcase in this forum. Uh, to give you some background on how we chose the companies today, uh, you know, People go through, they show off their business plans, they talk about their marketing plans and sales and growing their team and everything, and they never get a chance to really show off their product. So today we said, okay, we're gonna give six companies a chance to, to show us what they're working on, to show us how they're spending their days, what they're building, what they're excited about, and just give everyone uh, hope and optimism about the future of, hey, look at the cool stuff that we're creating here in the Northwest. Uh, and this year we had, uh, this, the process was the same as it's been in the past. About about 40 companies presented uh, or submitted to present to this event, so we only have room for six. We were able to pick 12 of those to come into our screening round, which met last week, and then we chose the six who were going to present today. And what was interesting this year, as opposed to past years, is, is usually uh, the people we invite really just rise to the top. They, they really are just are just obvious. But this year it was a it was a struggle every round. The companies were all so competitive that choosing the 12 to get to the screening round and choosing the six to get to this was was very difficult. And I'm saying that to really raise the bar to the to the presenters because uh, your your competition is actually also here in the room. So they want to know why they didn't get invited and you did. So bring your A games. Uh, and <laughs> we'll see what happens. So some of the trends I've seen uh, over the, the past few years I thought would be interesting to share about how companies are different now than what we saw when we, when we first started. So one of the ones that we're seeing just across the board is the rise of, of social media. So they've always been social media companies presenting to us in the last few years, but, but this year more and more uh, companies with that flavor or focus on that area have really started to stand out. Uh, we also continue to see a high number of, of telecom and telecommunications related startups. Uh, none of them made it to this event, but an awful lot of, of apps and, and, and droid focused companies uh, are coming through our process. As opposed to when we started, there weren't, weren't really anyone doing that. 
Enterprise software remains consistent. I don't think that's ever going to go anywhere. I think we're always going to see enterprise software companies coming through. Uh, green energy is again on the rise. And uh, one thing I noticed is uh, holding true constantly is the low percentage of things. So you'll see tonight that just about everyone's selling a service or a website or some sort of concept. And we have one of the companies has a thing. Uh, and it's pretty much the only thing that came, came through. Everyone, pretty much everyone's doing something web or service enabled. So that's, that's our trends in a nutshell. And uh, let's you know, not delay much longer. Let's get into the demos. How it's going to work tonight is we're going to take turns. So each of the six companies are going to come up one at a time. Uh, they're going to give their 10 minutes uh, their demo. So we're going to see their product. 10 minutes at the max. If you guys want to be done quicker, that's fine too. Uh, the judges are going to have five minutes to ask Q&A, uh, and then we're going to switch to the next, next demo. I ask that everyone in the audience please hold off on any questions until the very end. Uh, the judges will go in the back to deliberate who's the winner. Uh, in reality, everyone's a winner, but someone's going home with a plaque. Uh, and this year, some free software from Adobe. So that's that with where we're at. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Paul from Physic. Global Grid Telecom. Here, would you give that to him, please? Thank you. you bet. I was going to start my presentation tonight with a knock-knock joke, but because I'm a telecom guy, it really should be a ring, ring, ring joke. So if you'll indulge me, ring, ring, ring. I don't know. You know, that's the $64,000 question. When your phone rings, do you really know who's at the other end? Who's in control when your phone rings? Our customers tell us, both residential and business users, as well as the telephone company itself, that we may have come up with a better answer, a better mousetrap. My name is Harry Hart, and I'm the founder and CEO of Global Grid Telecom. We're a 10-year-old telephone company that has found a niche in making telephone apps for the phone line, the landline, and wireless lines. So you know about call waiting, call forwarding, three-way calling, the old school apps. We've come up with the next generation of apps that we call Max Command. Max Command are features that people add to their landlines. The residential user uses this service as a way to control their calls, inbound, outbound, where Johnny's call might go. Mom can be at work and see the call actually ringing at her home and be able to pull that call to her cell phone or redirect it to her husband in real time. The business user uses this as a way to see more marketing intelligence, real-time call data about the call that's coming in or going out. We simply add this feature to the Quest, in this case, phone line, and as the call is being dialed or being answered, we can take control and have dominion over what happens in that call. Advertisers and marketers tell us that it becomes a new pipeline or a pathway to the customer. As their consumer is dialing a telephone call, their, I'm sorry, their, their a consumer dialing their competitor, we can actually bridge the gap between the two of them, and that advertiser can speak to the user that might be calling the competitor. So our four apps that I'll show tonight are Max Insight, 
which is caller ID on steroids. We use a Google Earth API, and as the call is being answered, we spin the globe into the location where the call is coming from. We pop a balloon and populate that balloon with call elements that the user has dropped in so they can see a real-time interaction with their particular caller. I command is a set of rules, commands, and executables that the user places or scripts so that when they're receiving a phone call or making a phone call, they can execute or these things execute automatically. And I'll show you a couple of demos using Ed Hansen's telephone. Then GeoTime. Our max GeoTime is a 3D representation of my calls or the business's calls in real time as well. Call Captiva. Think of the call log in your cell phone bill. You see the inbound and outbound calls. We add a new layer at the website putting the social network icons directly to the phone number or the name. So as I'm reviewing my calls up to three years worth, as this archive grows and grows and grows, I can now see a bit additional elements to that call. So here we have our Google Earth. But a little bit about how this works first. Because we're connected to Quest right now, we have a proprietary connection to their underground, their data bunker. Similar to NORAD, these two data bunkers communicate with each other, as do all of the Quest central offices throughout their territory. So they have this 14-state territory to which 11 million telephones are connected. Our feature can be added to any of those phone lines. So that if Mary in Minnesota is making a call to Shelley in Tucson, we see in milliseconds the call traversing the network and the telemetry of the telephone numbers being exchanged. We can do something, and that becomes our secret sauce. So what Quest has done is allowed us to dip in to that data center and connect our servers to their servers so that we have this immediate connection. So what do we do with that? Well, as one of our customers, Austin Andrews, makes a telephone call, we spin the earth down to the house and you can see it in the background here, down to the house or the location where his call is coming from, and we then load additional information about this particular call as he has defined this window. He drops widgets and gadgets into this particular window, choosing the news and sports. Down here might be the Facebook and LinkedIn information. News, the sports was there. And so Eddie's picture and information about him shows up along with these clickable links. So Austin, during his phone call, now this is coming in before his phone has even started ringing. So he's able to see the inbound and outbound call detail before that happens. He also sees the last call that happened and when it happened. But then, as a, a, a retail business might then be able to send information messages directly to the user on their cell phone. Because we see, in this case, the fact that it's a Sprint cell phone, we now know that we have an SMS capability of dropping a message directly to the caller. So we could put out our 20% coupon and send it to that person's cell phone. On our iCommand app, and I'm moving from app to app here, again, these are the rules and executables that we allow the user to do. My favorite one is something that I've built for my mother as my mom dials a call to 911, send a text message to my buddy list, my brothers, my mother's neighbor, her doctor, Anybody that we feel would want to know or need to know that mom is dialing 911, mom is dialing 911 right now, connect with her when done. What she's able to do is then we can transfer the call directly to me when we are, or when she's done with that phone call. But in the case of Ed Hansen over here, let's talk about what he might want to do. As... Ed Hansen dials a call to 
Social 27 will be up here shortly, then send a text message to my cell phone saying that my competitor is receiving a call right now from a max command user. Do I want to take that call? Do I want to send a message to that caller? So while a competitor's phone number is being dialed, I can ambush that call because Ed has signed up for this service because we have a VIP offer for him. He's qualified for that. He's told us what industries he wants to mark, and we can send him a message based on that. As I dial a telephone number turn on my hot tub. These are again commands that I can kick off from my wireless device, from my home phone, anywhere where I can get dial tone. Because again, these are apps that are applied to the line and not the phone set. The second to the last one here that I will show you is now, as a business owner, I want to know where my calls are coming from. So here's a 3D analytics tool, and we'll see over on the far pane there my calls for February for a particular period of time. So now each of these people are my customers that have called me, but where we throw in our secret sauce is not only can I see my callers inbound and outbound, but I can also see where they are calling. Stripped of their identity, I can see when they're calling my competitor or the relationships between those callers. So this gives me additional marketing intelligence that I can then infer how I might want to change my marketing campaign based on the relationships between these callers. And I can then zoom in on a particular geographic area to find my trade area. Where am I getting a preponderance of my calls? Our distribution model is we uh, started calling Quest representatives, their agents. And their agents were interested in using a new tool to do retention work and or winbacks, pulling customers that were with Quest and now are with another carrier, bringing them back to the new location or the, the Quest location. When Quest heard about it, they called us and I thought, oh boy, I'm in trouble now. Quest said, Harry, we find that you're starting to call some of our agents. Is there a way that we might be able to roll this out across our agent platform? So as we now start to sell our product through the Quest channel, Quest will also be carrying our billing in their phone bill. And at that, I'll take questions. Very interesting. Uh, if you could talk a little bit more about the opt-in and the privacy questions, that would sure. be interesting. And also, if you could talk about the decline in landline and your reliance on one particular relationship with a company that's being sold. And Good. The um, landlines right now are at about 80% residential. They're, starting, they're dropping at about 4% per year. However, the business lines, both uh, VoIP and um, landlines, are at about 95% and don't seem to be dropping off as much because people, businesses are still relying on the landline as a, as a communication service. So 